What's up guys, Adam back in with the RV Returners. Uh, this time is our last set review for Opus 7, it's the Light and Dark cards. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at these cards and see how strong they are compared to other Light and Dark cards of the past. Alright, so first up uh, with the Light cards we got Yuna. She has uh, two abilities for zero, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a summon you may pay the cost to eat and cast it. Uh, you can only use this ability once per turn. And then for one, remove three summons in your break zone from the game, add Yuna to your hand. You can only use this ability during your main phase and only if you're in the break zone. Um, so just off the bat, she's over curve. Um, 2 CP, 6K. It's pretty nice. Uh, her name is Yuna, so, you know, YRP stuff. She's going to count toward that. It is pretty hard because, you know, right now the rare Yuna is seeing an extreme amount of play. Um, even, like, if you're playing, like, a Carbuncle deck, you have the other 2 CP, 4 Yuna. Um, but I think this is better than that. And then you also have the Heroic Yuna, which comes in and out depending on, you know, what's good in the meta at the time. Um, the first ability is great, uh, just being able to look at the top of your deck, and you can cast a summon. Uh, also your reductions come into play here, so say you reveal an Ultima and you have Yuna on board, obviously. Uh, you can pay four to cast it, you know, that discounted cost. Um, if you have, say, the new Mystic Knight and it's an Ice Summon, it does reduce the cost. So there's like little cool interactions there. Um, and I mean, just being able to kind of scry is pretty good. Um, it's not necessarily as good as a scry, I guess, because you, you do have to reveal it to your opponent um, so they get to see what's on top of your deck, whether or not it's a summon. Uh, she does pair really well with, uh, say, the new Seymour. You can do some pretty interesting things there. I think she's a good card. I think she just requires you to cater a little bit more to her in your deck. Um, so I do think that she's great. Next up, we got Yuri. He's a 4CP 8K. Um, he has all elements except dark. Dull a total of three active backups of the same element or two active backups of the same element and Yuri, and then select one of four. Uh, draw a card, choose a four, deal at 8K or 4K, choose one forward, dull and freeze, and choose one forward, it loses all abilities until end of turn. Um, so I think Yuri might be the best light card that we've ever seen. Um, I think Fasoya is very strong too, uh, and is seeing a lot of play right now for good reason. But this guy's power level is just off the charts, I think. Uh, especially in a mono deck is where he really shines. And obviously there are cards in this set that cater to him, like Chalinka and uh, and Alaria. Um, I've joked and said that this is the best fire card in the set. Um, I actually think that that is true. Like, since, you know, technically he's all elements when he's on the field. I think he gives fire a huge bump and allows fire to do things previously that they couldn't do. Uh, being able to dull and freeze outside of ice is insane. Uh, allowing ice to draw cards is insane. Uh, just try this guy in any mono deck, and I guarantee you he feels good. Uh, he's just great. You play him, you have two open backups. Uh, sometimes you'll just cast him, hard cast him from hand, pitch two cards, play him when you have two backups on the board, and you just start going to town. Uh, just alternating dull and freezing targets that are like high priority targets to just move him out of the way is amazing. Worst thing that happens if he gets removed, if you do that, is you draw a card. Uh, that's not bad. And then the 4K, you know, you can combo that with a lot of other relevant damage. Uh, then just being able to blank a card, I think that's really what helps fire too. Um, Yustola has been a problem card, and now you can just blank her and then cast a summon if you want. And then, you know, they can't, they have no option to try to cancel that summon. Uh, he can't turn off backups though, so Minwoo's still going to obviously be a problem. But again, I think in Mono Wind, this guy's insane. In Mono Fire, I think he's insane. I think he's good in Mono Ice, I think he's good and mono lightning i think the only mono deck that would probably favor another light card over this is water and that's just because facilia is really really good in there and there's just a lot of build around cards um but yeah i promise try this guy you won't be disappointed i think he's the best light card we've seen in a long time next up we got gaudis he's a 3 cp ak uh when he's put from the field into the break zone select one of the three following actions your opponent randomly discards one card from their hand. Choose one monster in your break zone, add it to your hand. Choose one forward, it loses 5,000 power until end of turn. Um, so he's pretty strong too. Uh, he's a bit slower than uh, the other cards. But uh, his all, all of his effects are nice. He's over curve. He has a backup actually in ice. So if you're playing ice and you play Chew Caspel, uh, he's going to be a 9k. Um, discarding randomly from your hand can be brutal in this game. I mean, just look at Nidhogg. And this is on a three-cost body. That Granted, it has to die, but still, that's pretty great. Uh, Monster Recursion is pretty nice. Um, it, it doesn't even like matter about the cost. It just puts it back in your hand. Um, so now we have ways to get Marlboros back if, if monsters become a thing again. 
Uh, and then a 5k power reduction is, is pretty relevant. I mean, if you block this guy, even if you're bigger, if he dies and he's going to reduce that by 5 on the way out, it's probably taking you with him. Um, you can set up some other favorable attacks when he dies. Uh, you know, I mean, that's probably the weakest of the effects, but it's still good. Um, I think Galdus is a pretty good card. Um, I, I actually, I'm, I'm a big fan of all the light and dark cards this set, so. Next up, we got Sen. He is a 9 CP 9k. Um, when he enters the field, break all forwards and monsters other than Sen, and Sen deals you a point of damage. And then he has an S. Uh, S and 9 colorless. Uh, at the end of your next turn, if Sen is on the field, your opponent loses the game, and you can only use this ability during your turn. Um, so, I don't think the S matters that much, to be honest. Uh, if you get the S off, congrats, good for you. It's kind of like Paradise, uh, but even more expensive. Um, it, it is, you know, reasonable to note that it has to be this version of Sin that stays on the field uh, to be get, uh, at the end of your next turn. Uh, so he has to last, this card has to last a full turn. You can't flash him because then it technically becomes a new card. Um, your opponent removes him, you know, that's done. So you, you have to literally save this copy of Sin uh, in order to win the game. So... Like I said, I don't think the S is great. However, the first effect, um, giving a board wipe to every element is amazing, even at the cost of 9. Um, dealing your point of damage is kind of whatever. It's not that big a deal, and a lot of decks can mitigate that. Um, it is a break. It's not a remove. So Shantoto is still the better removal because there are things that can't be broken, obviously. There are um, cards that can only be broken by stuff that does damage, uh, etc., etc. Um it is a monster breaker, though, which is even more of a, a hurt to monster decks. Uh, if monsters do get out of control, you're just going to see this running everywhere and just mo wipe your monsters. Um, so it might for force monsters to go in a different direction. Not that monsters was like a very prevalent deck toward the end of the last meta anyways. Um, but if it does come back, you know, Sen's going to keep them in check. Yeah, so uh, that's it for all the light and dark cards. Like I said, I think all these cards are really good. Uh, obviously, Yuri is a superstar, in my opinion, out of the four, but all four are super playable. Um, I I've seen every single one of these cards played uh, since, the since the set came out, and, you know, it's it's just amazing. This set is amazing. Uh, I hope everybody out there is having as much fun with the set as I am. And, uh, yeah, so that's it for our Opus 7 set reviews. Uh, see you guys next time. Peace.